Anne Boleyn, the second wife of King Henry VIII, made her way to the executioner's scaffold inside of the Tower of London. She had been found guilty of treason and adultery, as Thomas Cromwell had spun a web of lies that saw her condemned to death. The men accused of sleeping with Anne Boleyn were executed on Tower Hill, but Anne, being a queen, was allowed a private execution inside the Tower's walls. She was not the most liked queen that England had ever had, but she stole the king's eye away from his first wife, Catherine of Aragon. This made many women think that she was a home wrecker. Henry VIII, it's believed, had impregnated Anne when the pair married, and there is still a huge amount that we do not know about Anne. After her death, the king sought to erase her from history, and the royal paintings were whitewashed and thrown away, and her symbols were erased from the royal palaces. Following her death, there were a number of questions about Anne, and some rumours came to the forefront which were rather disparaging about her. But one which was very interesting was the question as to what happened to Anne Boleyn's heart following her death. The Tudors had a tradition, or a ritual in a sense, in which very important people had their vital organs, heart, and also entrails removed after death during the embalming process. But what is the story? of the missing heart of Anne Boleyn. On the 19th of May, 1536, the second wife of Henry VIII was being imprisoned inside of her rooms at the Tower of London, which, following her trial, had turned into her prison. The place she once awaited her coronation was where she would lose her head. But the reality behind the execution of Anne was that she needed to be got rid of as the king was lusting after and already courting Jane Seymour, one of her ladies-in-waiting. Jane would become the third wife of the king, and she did eventually give him the son that Anne could not provide him. Cromwell came up with a number of charges, and with this he asked a number of women to attend upon the queen to provide Cromwell with information to then provide the judges with. Anne was sentenced to death in the trial that took place at the Tower of London, and an executioner was then summoned from France to perform her execution. The Sword of Calais was the anonymous executioner who used a sword to take Anne's head from her body. It was considered more reliable as a method of execution, as opposed to using the commoner's axe. The sword was considered the cleaner method of execution, and Henry VIII, despite the fact he now despised his wife, wanted her to have a death which would not go wrong. Anne was told on the morning of her execution that she was to die that day, and then she was taken from her lodgings on the short walk to the executioner's scaffold. She was dressed in a red petticoat, and with her were two female ladies-in-waiting that had remained with her in her final days at the tower. She walked from the Queen's house, or the Cold Harbour Tower, around the White Tower, in front of a crowd of around 200 witnesses. Witnesses saw that she was not wailing and screaming, but instead was solemn, and it's believed had come to terms with her death whilst held inside of the fortress that is the Tower. She was helped up the stairs of the scaffold, and then she addressed the crowd and made a long speech to the King's advisers who were there. She stated that, Good Christian people, I am come hither to die, for according to the law and by the law I am judged to die, and therefore I will speak nothing against it. I am come hither to accuse no man, nor to speak anything of that, whereof I am accused and condemned to die. But I pray God save the king, and send him long to reign over you, for a gentler nor a more merciful prince was there never." and to me he was ever a good, a gentle, and sovereign lord. And if any person will meddle of my cause, I require them to judge the best, and thus I take my leave of the world, and of you all, and I heartily desire you all to pray for me. O Lord, have mercy on me, to God I condemn my soul. One of those who was there to witness the execution was Thomas Cromwell, the very man who had been the architect of her downfall and execution. But also there was the king's illegitimate son, Henry Fitzroy, who had been sent to the tower to see the death of Henry's second wife. 
On the scaffold, she made her final preparations, and Anne removed her headdress and tucked her hair under a coif and then said goodbye to her ladies. She said a few final prayers and gave to the executioner a bag of gold coins to make sure that the execution was performed swiftly. The swordsman got himself ready, and he had hidden his sword from view. Anne was knelt down with a blindfold around her eyes, and the executioner then raised his sword to the crowd, and a huge executioner's sword, and the crowd gasped. He then removed his shoes and signalled to the executioner's assistant to make a noise, and then with this Anne looked towards the assistant. The executioner then quickly and sharply swung his sword, and Anne's head was taken off in one blow. As was customary for traitors, usually the head would be shown to the crowd, but this did not happen. The executioner grabbed her gown and left the scaffold whilst her ladies were picking up her remains and then placed them into an oak chest which had held bow staves. Across England, Anne Boleyn was mourned by a few. But others considered she was a witch who had stolen the heart of the king. However, the fact that a Queen of England was executed by her husband inside the tower in such a brutal manner did not sit well with many, and even across Europe people heard of Henry VIII's evil and notorious reputation. After her death the King ordered a complete erasing of Anne from history, and all portraits of her were destroyed and were whitewashed, and her insignias were removed even from the ceiling of Hampton Court Palace. But then a rumour emerged about Anne Boleyn's heart and what happened to this after her execution. During the Tudor period, it was common for high-profile people, such as kings and queens, to have their hearts removed and then buried in different places to their bodies. This was even common during the Victorian period, as writer Thomas Hardy had his heart buried in a different location to his body. Henry VIII's third wife, Jane Seymour, after her death at Hampton Court, had her heart removed, and this was then buried separately under the high altar of the Chapel Royal at the palace, whilst her remains were buried in a vault in St George's Chapel in Windsor Castle. But after her execution, there were stories about Anne Boleyn's heart being removed following its burial inside the chapel of St Peter Advencula. Some people believed that her remains were taken elsewhere and were buried away from the site of her execution. Anne and the Boleyns had a strong link to Suffolk and Norfolk in England, and many thought that her body would be taken there once released to her family, and that they would be buried somewhere close to the Boleyns' family, seat of power, or somewhere significant to her. But the question as to what happened to Anne Boleyn's heart was very interesting. It's believed by some that Anne Boleyn's heart was removed from her body after her execution, and that this was then taken from the Tower of London, and was then buried inside St Mary's Church in Owarton in Suffolk. It was believed that Anne had told her ladies that her heart should be buried in this exact place after her death, as her heart remained close to the place she loved spending time. This rumour emerged during the Tudor period, and her uncle, Sir Philip Colthorpe, who married Anne's aunt, had actually owned the Tudor mansion that stood near to the church, so Anne, as a young girl, had spent a lot of time there, and she loved playing and relaxing in the land owned by her uncle. It was said that she was the happiest when she was at this Tudor house, and that this is why her heart was to stay there. However, after her execution, lots of people believed that her heart was taken and was then interred in this church in Suffolk. It would have had to have been taken from the Tower of London, as it's unlikely the king would have never given permission for this. There could also be an element of truth in this, as in the 19th century, the church had some work completed on renovations. It was then said that underneath the organ... A small heart-shaped lead casket was found, and inside of this box was a lot of dust. It was believed that this, in fact, could have been the decaying matter of Anne Boleyn's heart. Some historians doubt the authenticity of this, as Henry VIII took great steps to make sure that Anne Boleyn was wiped from history. But many of the locals believe that Anne Boleyn's heart was removed. During the Victorian times, Anne Boleyn's remains were discovered, 
and it was found that these were the Queen's remains, as the body had suffered a beheading. But interestingly, there was no record of her heart being found, as this would have disintegrated a long time ago, meaning that it was possible that the heart could have been moved, it could have been taken by people sympathetic to Anne, and there were a number who backed her. But today, inside the chapel of St Peter ad Vincula, the remains of Anne Boleyn are laid to rest, and it is a poignant burial next to the place where the second wife of Henry VIII lost her head. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.